Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Deanna Laird, and I am going to start off with a big apology. Um, we faced um, technical difficulties. I think it was mostly me facing technical difficulties, and I know we're getting off to a little bit of a late start, so I'm sorry about that, but I hope um, everything is going fine now. I have joined via phone, and um, we will work this as best as possible, but um, we have our team of experts from Golden Gate with us, and uh, all the information will be uh, provided on screen wise from their computers, and those seem to be working great. If you have questions or concerns, um, in the question panel, type those questions, and we do have someone monitoring those for us. Again, this, we're going through a bit of a middle person here, so we'll try to be as efficient as possible in this process. So getting that behind us, again, you know, hello and welcome. I apologize again, but um, I'm Deanna with Accounting Fly. I know um, that many of you have joined our webinars before. Thank you again for joining here today. And um, we're really excited about learning about different types of accounting degree options. And we, you probably know you, know you have Masters of Accounting, Masters of Science, Master of Taxation. And um, you know, what, what, what are the key differences behind those? What are some of the elements that you should be looking at when you're determining what degree is the best fit for you. And Golden Gate University is here with us today and I want to thank you for joining us and bringing your expertise and giving some of your insight on how you have established your programs and different degree options and why you have done that to line up with different career interests. Okay, um, You bring great reference points and I'm so impressed with the accolades that you received um, just on these different specialized programs. So I, we know that you're going to bring some great experience and you've been recognized as being the number one Masters of Taxation program, number eight MAC program, according to tax employers, which obviously is a great commendation. So thanks, Jim. We're excited to hear from your, from your experience and, and what you say makes a good program and what you have been through in establishing these. Um, to kick this off, uh, we're going to start with a video, and this is a video um, where the dean at Golden Gate University is, is joining us and basically going to give a brief introduction and tell a little bit about the programs that they have. Uh, so we're here from Fred, Fred Schroeder, the dean of the accounting, School of Accounting and the Bruce F. Braden School of Taxation. You'll also hear in this video from some alumni and some recruiting partners and their perspectives of how these degrees have been beneficial to careers. And there will be a few tips thrown in there to uh, you know, give advice uh, to prospective students or students um, in this process. And then we'll come back after the video and we'll meet with the three experts from Golden Gate University who are here live with us. And we'll go then a bit deeper into the different, different programs and we'll look at some examples um, that of what to look for when you're considering um, a program and to make sure that you choose a program that gives you a really comprehensive experience and sets you up the best way it possibly can. So with that, um, Rocco, if you will start the video and we can kick off um, with that. Great. Thank you, Deanna. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, first of all, if you can see us, there's three people um, here joining you from San Francisco Golden Gate University and I'd like to do some brief introductions and then afterwards we're going to go um, off screen so to share the video and then subsequently um, the, the webinar that we are here to uh, talk about. So I am Rocco Lamana and I am the Director of Administration. I'm here with two of my wonderful colleagues. Um, to the left of me I have Joel Segovia who is the uh, Director of Academic Programs for the Accounting School. And then I have Amina Kosomov, who's a program coordinator for both the School of Accounting and Braden School of Taxation. So welcome again, and uh, we look forward to um, you know, vetting any questions you might have at the end. So as Deanna had said, we're going to show you a video that will kind of kickstart kick us uh, in this presentation. And we're going to go off the screen. The MS tax and tax certificate programs are designed to be as flexible as possible to try to fit in with working professionals.
to help career changers, and also to offer full-time students who are hoping to get into the tax profession in a hurry the ability to complete the, uh, the MS tax degree in as little as nine months. The daytime program is set up on an intensive basis with a lot of working with your peers, but we also have classes offered at many other times and online to make sure that people who have other commitments for trying to juggle work and education are able to fit that into their career and move at their own pace. So you take a look at a career in accounting. It's an exciting industry. It's an industry that's in flux right now. If you have a solid background in accounting, our MSA, Master's of Science in Accounting program, is probably the right fit for you. If you're changing careers, don't have too much in the way of a, an accounting background, then maybe our MAC, Master's in Accountancy program, is the right alternative for you. Whichever path you choose, we try to have as much flexibility as possible. If you take a look at a career changer who's trying to get through quickly, in one year you're able to get your Master's of Accountancy degree and be out actually promoted in your career. We're rated very highly nationally. A number of surveys have rated us number one in the country. We certainly have the largest program in terms of students enrolled. I was already at KPMG for two and a half or three years when I came into the program, so I'd already made senior. Um, and it was an interesting decision because I decided to take a leave of absence and take about seven months off of work to do it. I noticed a huge difference in my understanding of the things I'm doing. I didn't necessarily learn those specific issues in the program. You really learn how to tackle them and how to find them. And so I think this program is extremely beneficial. It's a really good training round, and you get a lot of skills very quickly and a lot of exposure. They have recruiters come and they'll teach you something. Have that recruiter walk up and never where you are. Every recruiter knew who I was, knew my name, knew what was and that helped a lot. I had a recruiter tell me, oh, so yeah, I bet that was the most part. That person was great. Let's make sure she can get an interview. That people are always you know, thinking in the back. Is this person a potential candidate? KPMG, Deloitte, EY, Moss Adams, I think it's still across the street. You're right in the vicinity of all these people. So whether you know it or not, as you're coming to class, as you're leaving, as you're having lunch, you're actually running into a lot of people. On every resume, have your GPA. Because ultimately, a lot of the stuff we can train you on the job. As long as you're teachable, which is what your GPA shows. Thank you for coming. Okay, so the goal for today, or the objective for today's presentation, is to really dis demystify what is a MAC versus an MSA versus the MST program. So we have three programs that we're, we offer here within the School of Accounting and the Braden School of Taxation that we're going to discuss. So when you are looking for, at programs and you're doing research to see what program might best suit you, you may come across these three types of degrees, but you may come across other types of degrees, like an MBA in accounting or MBA in tax. And they all provide a different approach to your educational experience. So what we're going to share with you is, what will that type of degree serve you uh, if you were here at Golden Gate University, attending Golden Gate University? And what else to look for when you're trying to determine what is really the program uh, for you, the right program for you. I mean, you might see uh, you know, other degrees like MPA, Masters of Professional Accountancy, uh, and don't really understand what this means for you in your career path. So using the three degrees we offer here, we're going to kind of demystify everything and kind of give you an overview. And please you know, ask questions at the end that will help clarify and better understand what we do here at Golden Gate University. So today's topic is what's the difference between MAC, MSA, and MST. We have two schools, uh, and Deanna and the video kind of briefed on them. We have the School of Accounting, and we have the Bruce F. Brayton School of Taxation, which serves different purposes. And my colleagues are going to be speaking about the respective schools that they represent. 
uh, and that they work with more closely uh, in the fields here at our uh, university. And we're going to first start off with the School of Accounting. Thank you, Rocco. Um, so just as Deanna mentioned earlier, we are ranked number seventh uh, for our Master's of Accountancy in the Taxation Concentration, and then eighth for the General Concentration. Uh, what we're going to move on to now is the various degrees that we offer in the School of Accounting. Oops. So we're going to first start off with the Master's of Accountancy. So who is this program really meant for? These are This program in particular is really meant for career changers. Uh, for instance, maybe you don't have any accounting background, or you say, for instance, you might have a liberal arts degree. This program is really going to get your foot in the door at accounting firms if you don't have that background or very little background. Another nice thing about this program is that all the classes are eligible for CPE credit. This means uh, once you become a licensed CPA, you need to maintain your licensure, and all these classes will help you meet that requirement. In addition to that, our program tries to be as flexible as possible for our students. So we give you different um, routes to take our programs in. You can take them in person or through our online campus. And you can take both, um, so you can complete your program completely in San Francisco or completely online, or you can do a mix of the two. Because we have students here in San Francisco, which is a little bit difficult for them to get to class, um, just because community might be an issue. So they can take those classes online if they'd like. And before uh, Joel goes on to the next set of slides, um, I'd just like to pause a moment and, and briefly describe what tax talent and what their rating really means uh, in the scope of education. So tax talent is an online professional portal for tax, tax professionals. And it helps uh, people in development of their careers and ongoing education. What they do every year is go out and they survey over 150 tax hiring professionals and they ask a set of questions to vet out what types of schools are, and programs are they uh, hiring from. And th this is how our recognition came about uh, for both the School of Tax and the School of Accounting. Um, so Tax Talent is a professional website. You can easily find them at taxtalent.com. Or if you go to our website and look at any of our programs, see the star symbol that you saw on the previous uh, slide. By clicking on that, you can see the full report of all of the schools that were um, listed under the different categories that they surveyed. Cool. Thank you, Rocco. And now we're going to move on to the breakdown of the curriculum for our MAC program. Um, as you can see in the slide, there's 45 graduate units. Of those 45 graduate units, 33 of them are core courses. And those core courses are required classes that you have to take because it's going to touch upon all the different parts of the CP exam. So that's why I want to make sure that students that don't have that ICANN background touch upon all those four, four parts of the CPA exam so that way you can do well when you take that exam. In addition to that, then we have the 12 units of your uh, concentration. So depending on your situation, it's, it's going to kind of dictate which concentration you want to take. For instance, we typically recommend students um, for that are trying to sit for the exam to do the general concentration because this is going to get you the, a good broad knowledge and a good basis for that exam. In addition to that, then you can pick between the forensic or taxation concentrations. And these are more for people that want to focus in these areas um, in accounting. So taxation is a little bit more law-based. And then forensic, you're kind of looking at transactions to make sure nothing was conducted illegally. So those are the differences between those three. If you're kind of on the fence, typically we would recommend the general concentration just because that's going to get you a wide knowledge of accounting. In addition to that, for our programs, we have internship courses, which you can do for your program. And it's a great option for students because you're able to get a lot of real-world application experience, and then you're also able to use that towards your degree for units. Okay, so that was the Master's of Accountancy. Now we're going to move on to the MSA, the Master's of Science in Accounting. And this is a little bit different. Um, what this program is really geared towards is for people that have an accounting background. And when we say you have an accounting background, this is typically meaning that you have a bachelor's degree in accounting 
or you've taken a lot of accounting courses which would satisfy a lot of the proficiencies for this particular program. Um, typically students would also go to this program, for instance, if they're lacking some units to, to get to the 150 hour requirement to become a licensed CPA in the state of California. I know California is one of the last states to move to that requirement. So this would really be a program for those students who need those additional units. <coughs> In addition to um, the MSA program, uh, as the MAC program, the courses are also CP eligible. So if you need to maintain your licensure, then you need to continually take classes or find ways to get CP credit, and these classes are a great option for you. In addition to this, the MSA program um, is really geared towards people kind of tailoring their program to what they want to focus in, because the assumption is you already have an accounting background, but you want maybe delve a little bit deeper into a certain area. So out of the 10 courses of that you end up taking, most of them are electives. And we're going to go a little bit more into uh, detail with the, the next slide. So here's the 30 units uh, for this particular program. We have two concentrations in this one. You can do the general concentration, which once again is really geared towards people that just want a broad knowledge. But if you want to get into a little bit more forensic accounting, then that's a great option. Um, just keep in mind, you know, if you are picking a concentration, that's kind of the area that you're going to want to focus in in your career. And in addition to, the, to that information, we also do internships for the MSA program as well. And now I'm going to turn it over to Amina Kosimov, who's going to walk us through um, the Bruce F. Braden School of Taxation program. Thank you, Rocco. So Rocco's already uh, provided us with an understanding of the tax talent survey. So GGU's MST program has consistently been voted number one or number two in the nation. And this year's survey ranked us the top program in the nation once again. So let's talk a little bit about our tax program. In contrast to the School of Accounting, the School of Taxation only has one type of program, which is the Masters of Science in Taxation. The program is structured in such a way that both students with or without previous experience are able to enroll. The progression of the courses will have you start with the fundamentals of tax and go into more specialization areas. Oh, I'm sorry. Our classes are offered both in person and online, and some students choose to do a mix of both. All courses are eligible for CPE credit, and the MST program can satisfy 24 units of the accounting requirement for the California CPA exam. We also have two satellite campuses in Seattle and Los Angeles that offer in-person classes. The full program is 30 units, which translates to 10 courses overall. Seven of those courses are required, and three would be elective courses of your choosing. Since, since our tax program doesn't have a formal option for concentrations, many students use their electives to emphasize on a certain area of interest. Now, We've kind of did a, a brief overview um, of the different programs we offer within the two schools. Um, most students ask us questions about what types of jobs or career paths will I have? In general, the accounting and tax degrees will prepare the students to work in public accounting, uh, government agencies, corporations, and nonprofit organizations, but that's not exclusive to those. You might find students opening up their own practices after a while. Um, so there's a variety of different options and pathways to different careers that students uh, engage on. Um, and as the video showcased, we're here in San Francisco. It's a beautiful sunny day, by the way. And uh, we're in the neighborhood of a, many, many public accounting firms and agencies that uh, hire from us so that we're really in a unique position. 
And so depending on your area of interest, you may choose to pursue any of the following specialized areas of tax. Like I, I mentioned earlier, um, with the tax program specifically, you will use your electives to uh, cater to the area of tax that you're most interested in. But with the required programs, uh, with the required courses in our program, you'll gain exposure to partnership, corporation, and individual tax. Um, but may choose to pursue electives in international, state and local, or multi-state tax that will lead you to the respective career paths. And uh, moving on to the accounting careers, um, typically if you're going to go into accounting, it's going to fall under these three areas, um, auditing, assurance, or forensics. The, the auditing, when you're looking at that particular area, it's basically a general evaluation of organizations or aspects of the organization, and this is conducted internally or externally. On the other hand, you have assurance, um, which kind of goes hand in hand with auditing, and, and insurance in particular is an independent evaluation of existing information, and then you provide your findings to the client so that they can make better informed decisions. And then the last area that we typically see is forensic. Uh, this is a result of the Enron of everything that went down during that time, and basically what it's doing is ensuring that everything that's done by a company is legally and legit, and if it's fine, if there are any findings are illegal, then you know what steps to take, and then you can go ahead and um, follow that. So I'm going to turn it over to Rocco. Uh, back. So when we did our introductions and talked about the objectives, you know, there's the degree programs that we did an overview for. But when you're looking into and researching institutions that might ha have programs that you're interested in, you have to then evaluate them and figure out what one program is right for me. So there are some of the behind the scenes benefits that you need to look at. And again, we're gonna use Golden Gate University as a template so that when you're out researching, think about what we've covered here and what do you see or when you're talking to somebody at the other institution, what are you learning about how they support students, uh, faculty, careers, um, a couple of other things that we might discuss um, that would be a benefit to you. So when you're thinking about programs, let's look at starting off with the faculty. Here at Golden Gate University, we have a core of full-time faculty in both of our programs or schools. And we have a wide range of adjunct faculty that bring around a lot of experience in addition to the core faculty. So all of our faculty have extensive uh, experience in tax and accounting. Um, most of them, or many or all of them, do frequent engagements in local professional agencies such as Cal CPA. Some of them do speaker series at individual firms and have networking uh, opportunities that really come back into the classroom and the overall experience that our students um, get, to, get to experience themselves. In our full-time faculty for tax, many are attorneys, and 60% have CPAs, so that's an important factor to consider. Do they also have their CPAs? Because they can better guide you, the student who might be pursuing or sitting for a CPA. Our adjunct faculty are also nationally and regionally recognized experts in the fields, and many of them might be authors and do published uh, articles and journals regularly. We have many uh, featured faculty members who uh, publish journal articles uh, monthly. And this is a really important factor here because um, they are staying current and bringing that relevant information into your classroom experience. Not only do they have this type of background, but our faculty also play a very important role in the development of the curriculum and the courses that are in each of the programs that we discussed, um, which is in, important for you to know because they're bringing in relevant, and information, rele, relevant information uh, that is key to your learning and also what the employers expect to um, see from students when they are graduating or they're in the hiring process. Next, we want to talk about pathways. 
Both of my colleagues touched on different ways that we deliver our programs. There's the more traditional pathway that many schools still offer, which is at the brick and mortar type experience, um, which is on campus here in San Francisco or at one of our satellite campuses for the tax program, either in LA or Seattle. However, we recognize, and what the core uh, mission of, of uh, GGU is, is to provide an experience of ed an educational opportunity and experience for students who are already in the field. These are professional students. So we know that they can't always come to campus, and so that's not an option in today's busy and hectic lifestyles that we all lead. So we do have online courses that are designed to help students who can't be here all the time, but to continue to move towards completion of their degree. We also have a very unique pathway called the cohort pathway. Now this is an accelerated program that's offered only in the daytime, and we have one for the tax and accounting students, and one for the accounting students. And the program starts in the fall, and it goes nine months for the tax program, and a little bit longer for the accounting program, which is about 12 months. It's accelerated, so you do the amount of courses that you would do in the traditional pathway, but you do it in, in a much faster pace. We also offer many professional events, and these are just a few that I put here on our um, webinar today. The Lunch and Learns are a really unique opportunity for students to come face to face with industry leaders who are talking about relevant, important topics in the industry. Um, we do about 40 of them, and they begin in the fall series, or in the fall time, uh, offered at lunchtime, of course, and they're just one-hour snippets of time, so it's great for even our alumni to come in and sit and attend these. Um, we also do a speaker series that's offered in the fall time, and this is where we have and invite thoughtful leaders of different um, backgrounds and industries to come and speak to our students about what is important as you become a leader in your industry or any, any industry. Um, so these are really great events that just support the classroom experience. We also offer tutoring and advising. Our faculty are a great resource for tutoring and also for guidance on career-related topics. We also have graduate advisors that help map out the pathway to completion. So where will you start and how will you get to the finish line is what the graduate advisors will help you um, delineate and then also help you along the way. We also have career advisors and they meet with through our Office of Career Planning. You can do remote career planning um, through a conference, uh, business conferencing service uh, or in person. We also do tutoring, and we found that it's really important that we have a lot of students out there who are not coming to campus every day because they're taking online classes, and they may be located in another state, uh, or just too busy to come to campus during normal uh, hours. So we offer tutoring uh, in person, via email, and we also use a tutoring, uh, excuse me, a conference tool called Zoom, and the student can connect with the tutor during the scheduled hours and connect to that person face-to-face -face and get tutoring. So there's a lot of different avenues to support students through advising for career and for academics. And recruitment is a very important topic because at the end of the day, you want to have a job. You want to have a new career, and most students are coming to either support their current career or maybe searching for a new career. So we do career fairs. Uh, we do one throughout the a year uh, in the fall time where we have over 40 employer partners who are recruiting our students. But recruitment doesn't just happen during the career fair. Um, our employer partners are constantly tapping into Golden Gate University for talent. And so they will work with our Office of Career Planning and post job openings on job boards so that active current students or alumni can uh, access the job board and see what um, partners are out there recruiting and what types of jobs. 
This is a great opportunity for students to get out there. And we do the legwork. All you have to do is either show up to a career fair or go to the job board and look at active postings. We've covered in a very short amount of time a lot of information, and you may have questions, and we hope that you will ask questions at the end of this webinar. Uh, but if you do have questions later on, there's several ways you can contact us. Um, you can talk, contact us via email at tax at ggu.edu or accounting at ggu.edu. We also have ongoing webinars, and we have one coming up on March 1st, um, one for the tax and one for accounting, and I've included the tiny URL so that you can go on and register for those if you wish. March 2nd. Oh, excuse me, March 2nd, not March 1st. I correct, actually correct that date, March 2nd. So at this point, if you have any questions, I guess the moderator can help us field questions. Yes, hi, Rocket, this is um, Deanna. And yes. we do have um, several questions that have already come in and some um, really good questions, guys. Um, let me remind you, keep on sending those questions in the question panel of the webinar toolkit, okay? Just type those into the question panel and we'll pick them up. So I'll start reading off the questions to the team here. And if we don't get to your question, during this live session, don't worry, we'll get a response back to you. So don't hold back on anything that you would like to ask. All right? Okay. So let's start off um, with the first question we, we got was about, the, I guess, kind of really a comparison of the different degree programs. And someone asked, which one is the most demanding, both now and in three to four years? So if you could respond to that and maybe, uh, it's probably an opinion-based <laughs> answer, but uh, in the in the classroom um, itself, degree, and perhaps also talk about career-wise if there if there are thoughts or if you have a perspective about the man behind the different professions that a degree would typically lead to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll invite my colleagues to you know, jump in and participate in the response here. Uh, but my first uh, response or attempt at this response would be that um, in the tax field, as long as we have the IRS, there will be a need for <laughs> the tax professionals to kind of um, make sense of what all that means and how does that work for corporations or individuals and whatever the type of entity um, the, uh, the client is. So I think that uh, as we have different tax laws and rules come in, into play and the IRS has very complicated tax policies, making sense of all that is going to be a, a demand in the field, and I foresee that that's going to be uh, an increasing demand, in my personal opinion. Um, but I'll invite my colleagues to respond as well. Yeah, I, I think either program is really in demand. I mean, I, as a student, would actually be asking myself which area I want to focus in more, because either accounting or tax, there's always a need for a tax and then also accountants. Um, so if you're more into, like, law and those types of things, then maybe taxation might be the route to go. If you're more into like numbers, auditing, insurance, then accounting would be the route. But really, both programs are going to have a high demand. Either way, you really can't go wrong. I also think that there's like a uh, misunderstanding about people who pursue tax degrees, that they don't necessarily have a background in tax, and, or I mean accounting, excuse me, uh, which I believe uh, Amina mentioned earlier. Um, so majority of our faculty, their background is not in accounting uh, when they got into the tax profession. Um, as, you pointed, as I pointed out, they have some law backgrounds and so forth. Um, so I think that, you know, Joel answered it really well. It's like, what, is really make, what, is, what really makes sense for you in your career path? Uh, but if you're kind of on the fence, you know, the accounting program, the MAC degree offers a concentration in tax. So there's a happy balance, if you will. Yeah, so I'm going to piggyback up off of that. Um, we received a question that I think you just answered, and it was, uh, why is a law degree important for tax faculty? So <laughs> kind of just to address that, you had mentioned that a high percentage of your faculty um, did have a law degree. 
Yeah. So kind of on that same thought, though, do you think a law degree or some law education is important to combine with perhaps a master's of, in taxation? Well, I think the experience that the student gets in the master's of taxation is going to be law-based because you're talking about IRS codes and laws and regulations. So these, this is very technical um, reading material. And so I, I believe that it is an experience that the student will feel like, I feel like a lawyer or an attorney sitting in this class because it's all law-based. However, I think that if a student wants to pursue additional um, educational experience, that partnering in the law program or going to get a JD to supplement or add on to the tax degree is a good um, partner uh, relationship between the two different degrees especially if they're pursuing higher levels of, uh, or specific levels of um, fields in the tax uh, industry. For example, they have, many of these um, large corporations especially have uh, a whole department of lawyers in this field of tax identifying specific um, challenges that their clients may be working with. But that doesn't mean that a tax, a student who has a master's in tax wouldn't be able to get a, a great job and a great career path just by having their master's in tax. I think a lot of um, students go on or people go on later on to add on the, uh, the law part for future development and growth. Okay, great. We have a few questions and I, I think I have an echo. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you fine. Great. Um, it, there were a few questions around the number of hours to sit for the CPA and the value of a master's kind of is the, is the general theme here. So let me combine them and you can perhaps address them what I think would be in a, in a full answer from you. So if students already have the 150 hours to sit for the CPA, um, you know, what is the additional value of getting a master's degree and combining that um, with the choices between your MAC degree versus your master's of science and accounting degree? And then the kind of the third aspect is, do you think it's important for people to have experience before beginning the master's program? Um, I will tackle that and there's several different components in that question that you just <laughs> asked. Um, I think, in my opinion, going on to get a master's degree is an important aspect of future growth and development for any individual in this, these fields. Um, more, more and more fat, or excuse me, more and more employers are looking for the higher levels degree, higher level of degrees when they're hiring and promoting people. Um, what used to be okay years ago, getting a bachelor's was okay uh, and could get you pretty far. Um, that is not the case anymore. They want the higher levels of, of learning and understanding uh, in the field, specifically in the accounting and tax fields. And they're looking for those people with that educational uh, background. That's not to say that those um, same industries are not hiring uh, people who have CPAs or bachelors, but they may require after a certain period of time that, or a, contingent, or a contingency of being hired, that you do complete a master's program. So we've seen different scenarios, but we know that a majority of our employer partners are looking for students who are graduating with a master's level degree. And I, that addresses the first part, but I don't, you might need to repeat the last part of your question, Deanna, is it, I don't remember what, exactly what it was. Sure. So it, it kind of the theme of uh, what you have before getting a master's, okay. What about experience? Um, do you think having work experience or applicable work experience is important before attaining your master's or alternatively are they set up to um, you know, to, to not provide significantly greater value if you don't have experience already? Well, I always think that experience, and my colleagues would 
probably um, like to chime in and, and say the same thing. Or maybe they'll disagree with me. But um, I think that experience always benefits the student in the uh, classroom because they can apply what they're learning in the classroom to a real world experience that they may have, have encountered. However, that may not always be the case. And we have a lot of students who don't have backgrounds in accounting or tax pursuing those fields because they're career changers or they're just branching into this field for the first time um, and they're building off a bachelor's program and they're just going right into a, a master's program and they don't have time to go out and get the experience. So if you don't have experience, you have an internship opportunity which will allow you to get that hands-on experience and apply what you've been learning over the, uh, the course of the, of the degree program in, in a firm somewhere, wherever you're, you, know, you decide to go. And this is really a great opportunity to practice what you've been learning and see what you feel. What does it feel like to you? So you don't necessarily have to have experience, and that's not a, a requisite of hiring. It may be beneficial, but it's not always required. Yeah, and just to kind of reiterate, you know, we do have the two different programs, the Master's of Accountancy, which is geared towards people that won't have that accounting background. So that's really to give them a strong foundation and build upon that. While we have the MSA, on the other hand, for people that already have that accounting background, so they would probably go into that program. So there's different routes depending on the situation for the individual. Okay, great. And also, and also I just like to interject, when we're talking about anything related to the CPA, we're using the standard for California. So if you're in another state, the standard there may be different. Although they're trying to make this uh, uniform across the nation, I can't speak to other states, but I want to speak to what happens here in California. Okay, excellent. All right, going back and talking about the degree in tax, um, someone's asked, are you pigeonholing yourself in a tax field for the remainder of your career? Or are there other options to pursue after working, for example, in public accounting tax for a few years? Well, I would say that from experience, most students don't go into a master's of science in taxation if they aren't pretty set on that being their career path. It is a pretty niche field. And so um, if you're looking for something a little bit more broad, this, this probably isn't the path for you. But um, if you're really looking to uh, progress your knowledge in the field of tax, this is really um, the program for you. I mean, it, you'll, like I said, you'll start with the fundamentals of tax in your work. You'll build on those skills and work your way up to, into more specialized skills. And that would most likely lead you to a career in tax. I wouldn't say that most students would branch out from that. Um, but there's a lot of different avenues to take with your MST. For example, we posted a few, you know, there's multi-state tax, there's uh, individual tax, there's international tax. So there's a lot of different avenues that you can venture into and those are very specific fields that have a lot more um, it, well, there's a lot more knowledge or experience needed in those areas because, you know, we're not, we're, we offer courses like international tax, but that's just to get the students started. It's not going to be the end all. So there's a lot more opportunity for growth in different areas of tax. So, I mean, I think there's, I think you're not pigeonholing yourself, um, but you're, you're able to venture into different uh, avenues of tax. So would you agree with the, um, I guess, advice that, you know, it is often hard to maybe determine with a 100% confident that a path that you may choose early in your career is the one you want to stay in for the whole career? Well, yeah, you know, it, people change careers often, and we yes. see that when they come into one of our programs. However, you know, what I so, also think that a student might do is talk to a faculty member to get the insights um, that might help that student decide, is this the right pathway for me in my professional career? Okay, good. That's, that's good advice. And I think it's encouraging the audience you know, to know that um, it's 
not it you can change there are options to change it, what's important is to pursue what you are good at what you like doing and just have the you know you, you can move your pathway as you wish um, get advice from outside people but don't feel like you have to stay in one area great okay another question could you please comment on cloud-based accounting service could that potentially reduce accounting profession workforce and reduce job opportunities? Hmm. You know, I, I don't know enough about cloud-based uh, accounting I, to respond. Uh, I could definitely find out and, and get more information and, and get it out to you, Deanna, so that you can forward it to the person who asked that question. Okay, great. That would be I don't want to take a stab at it and, and because I know that actually um, – has been a topic that we've been hearing around uh, for a little bit of time, but I don't know where it's where it is at currently and how people are using this um, in their field. Got it. Okay, so uh, that one will will wrap back around on the answer for that for that question, but that is a very interesting question. Um, okay, you mentioned uh, Joel. I think it was you who mentioned about CPE credit and. Um, you mentioned, I believe as part of the MST, that all classes were eligible for CPE credit. The question is, how many credits are they eligible for? Is it equal to the credit hour of the degree? And also, is CPE credit available in each of the degree programs? Sure thing. So the CPE, or each class would give the individual 15 hours of CPE credit. And these hours apply to any three-unit accounting course, any three-unit taxation course. Does that answer the question? I believe so. If, if the, the person who asked that, if it didn't, then please type in. Well, it, so yes, and that's important to know because in order to stay active with your CPA, you do have to do professional development courses. And so many of our alumni can come back and take these courses. So that would be another, you know, reason to look at, you know, a school or a degree program is, do they offer CPE courses? What types of services do they offer to their alumni uh, once, you know, they've graduated? And we have a very strong alumni um, program here, which we're really proud of. And we see many alumni coming back either teaching and or doing CPE courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, that is um, good. So I'm going to piggyback that with a question we got also related to alumni services, and it's around recruitment. Um, I believe, remember, you did mention um, alumni active or coming back for, for positions, looking for openings. Can you comment a bit more about the alumni program that Golden Gate University offers? It's specifically in recruitment with, with this question. Okay. Um, so, go ahead. I was just going to say, alumni are invited to attend our career fair. So, if they'd like to participate the year after they graduate or after that, they can. So, they can come back to the career fair. Um, they can also access the job postings through our Office of Career Planning. Um, so, those are the two recruitment opportunities uh, for anybody who's looking to change their their employer. Right. Okay. In addition, let's just go on to say that when we do these lunch and learn events and we do uh, any of the events, we tap into the alumni population as well and invite them to attend when it's appropriate. Um, so there's opportunities for them to be in front of, you know, leaders in various industries and connect, network in person right at that moment. Sure. All right. Oh, and, and we do have, oh, and I just yeah. reminded, my colleagues just reminded, we also have clubs. I forgot to mention that. So an accounting club and we have a tax club. And uh, alumni can be members of those clubs. So clearly you have a lot of different uh, options and outreach with your alumni. Those are some really good examples. And that's really important because yeah. the alumni want to feel supported from their institution even now after they they paid the bill and they got their degree, right? There's more than, than just getting the degree and then paying your tuition. 
there has to be more services and support. Absolutely, and you, we just talked about someone who may want to change the course of their their career, right? So that's right. a really good example of how um, a need of an alumni be, may become very live and active. Um, you know, short time after graduation, or maybe even several years after graduation. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Good. Um. I know we're getting close to the end of the hour, but I have a couple more questions. We'll, we'll try to get to here. And you mentioned online courses. So, well, you, you talked about a variety of, of uh, ways that your, your classes um, are delivered, right? The brick and mortar and online options as well. And so, <laughs> excuse me, um, online courses. Courses I think have been developing significantly over recent years, but can you describe or compare the environment of online courses compared to the brick and mortar? And and when a student is deciding if online environment is right for them, can you um, what should they be thinking about to help them know if that if they would be successful in that environment? Well, to start off, I don't think we mentioned earlier that our online courses are asynchronous, so students have the flexibility of logging on throughout the week at their availability. Um, so that's one important thing to point out because there are other programs out there that require you to be available at a certain date and time, and this gives you that flexibility. So if you are a working professional, even if you are in the area, sometimes having that flexibility is really important to you because you're working and you can't predict your schedule and so um, that is something that is important to consider. Um, our classes are monitored by our e-learning team who try to make sure that we have the most cutting-edge technology incorporated, that the classes are as interactive as possible. You know, the uh, instructors will be posting interactive videos online. Um, for the students to access. Um, they're actively involved in the discussion posts on a weekly or even daily basis in, in some cases. Um, so there is a lot of interaction, but it does also give you that flexibility of um, participating at your convenience within a given week. Also, some faculty teaching online courses are really creative. Uh, not only are they using the tools that are embedded within the platform we use, but many of them will hold a uh, conference, vid a video conferencing, tutoring session, or a class meeting where they'll review material uh, and or record their lectures and upload them. So in some opportunities or some cases, uh, you might be able to um, conference with the faculty member using video conferencing such as like, the tool we're using today and uh, have that almost face-to-face -face interaction experience uh, even though you're sitting in different parts of the country, perhaps. Okay, so online could be great for people who are working or have other obligations that may impact their timing, right? And those who are not geographically close to to the program that they're particularly interested in. Exactly. Now, it is a different type of student that takes an online course because uh, if you're a student who's not self-directed and can't manage your own time, you're going to probably struggle in making sure that you're posting and turning in the work on time. Um, and, you know, there's also the, uh, the need for answering questions and so forth. So while faculty members are quite uh, engaged in, in responding, you may not get the response uh, right away. It may take 24 hours before you get a response which is unlike with that experience you have in the classroom. You raise your hand, you ask the instructor, the instructor gives you the feedback. So there's some differences in the experiences that are obvious, but it also means that a certain type of student may need to think about whether or not online platform is ideal for him or her. Okay. Yeah, that's good advice. We have one question I think you can answer pretty quickly, and then we're really out of time, but let's try to get this question in. Um, we had a question about asking about the number of students, both undergraduate and graduate students, that you have enrolled at Golden Gate University. And I guess, I don't know if you know the total enrollment, but if you could give at least the accounting program numbers, that would be wonderful. Accounting and taxation combined. Yeah. 
So no, I don't know the total population for the Golden Gate University unless my colleagues do. Um, I do know, because I look at it often, <laughs> the population for uh, both of our schools. So in the School of Accounting, we have roughly 450 students active at this moment. And in the School of Tax, or the Braden School of Taxation, we have just under 1,000 students active. That's great. These are just graduate students. This is, an I mean, this is just our schools, the School of Accounting and School of Tax. Yeah, it's a very large program. Um, it's impressive, very impressive. OK, it is um, time to close out the webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here. And you know, this advice that you've given is so spot on, and, and I think using examples of your programs um, and using your program as a template is so helpful. So, you know, those of you in the audience remember what they said and, 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 and how they have set up their curriculum and, and, and the aspects like the, the faculty and the retreating aspects, because these are examples of top rated programs. This is what a, a top program looks like, and they have put this together with a very strong direction and purpose behind it. So really good example of what to look for um, and how to decide you know, uh, where you should go. And Golden Gate uh, University is obviously a, a good example of that. So um, Rocco and, and Joel and Amina, thank you so much for being here and sharing your, your thoughts and your expertise. We really appreciate it. And um, everyone, thank you. And we'll sign off from here. Thank you very Take much. Care. Thank you, everybody.